Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here in the Thousand Week Reich in which we're playing as everyone's favorite Russian Republic, the Russian Republic, but we're led by Vladimir Nobolkov because some guy kept pestering me to play this mod, so, and using this turn around, so I've already gotten in, we've gotten this far. I've already done the first little part of this campaign to get to this point, so, what's on us last? The Return of Skalen. Stamming better allies, the United States determine what they owe us. We must negotiate with them for the wrongful taking of Alan Sakalin. We're the friends that now, after all, they must concede and look outwards. Although the time has finally come for us to assert our claims as the rightful government of all Russians, we must escape the desolate frozen waste and that is a far east to make a broken nation whole once again. Sakalin's been returned. Nice. Sakalin has been returned to us from American occupation. And my goal right now is to strike fast and swiftly into these little puppet states, these broken states, so that this way we can go ahead and try to core stuff as fast as possible. Uh, with, what's his name? Nabokov. We are liberals, a liberal Russia, as we are trying to reunite and just get get the territory as fast as possible. That's the goal. Just get as much territory, especially if they're in a two-front war. I kind of doubt we can get that far that fast, but whatever. Securing Central Siberia. We must secure our lands of Siberia. Not only are these warlords just pathetic imposters of Russia, they are also a security risk we must take care of. Also, we do have a nice cup, well, I guess, well, no, at this point, third last cup of tea, which is what I normally don't drink on the channel, but we have some tea here. Kind of already cold, but whatever. All right, preparing against the Bolshevik menace. One of the neighbors has got to be one of them. So, one of the following true is a neighbor of the Perm, a Kazan, or Kazakh government, which we are not. So, after that one, we'll come over here and do uh, Nobokov's government. Following a tight election campaign, Vladimir Nobokov has been elected Prime Minister of Russia on a platform considered to be an evolution of old Russian liberal thought. But since we're here, we might as well get an orderly mobilization, so we start building up just uh, a little bit more. Also, we have these three divisions, uh, basically two tank divisions uh, that are 18 combat, which is not bad. That's actually pretty decent. And then a mechanized division, which is 12 combat width, which is okay. Could be better, whatever. Um, but yeah, overall, not bad. Um, what else we got around here? Artillery's already been upgraded, which is very, very nice. Helicopters, we're probably going to ignore. Get some better planes. And secure Central Siberia. No, why do we have this popped open then? Oh, we're going to do this one. Air superiority, I wonder why. Cool. Alright. Well, let's see what type of magic we can make here. They have up to 12 divisions. We have at least 18 with these infantry divisions, which are 18 combo with each. Uh, with artillery and engineers, I might throw on some logistic companies, but we'll see. That's definitely up in the air for now. Ah, uh, liberal tripartite. Nobokov's election campaign was focused primarily on a single trinity. Fight for international justice, equality at home, and economic liberty. This should be Russia's mandate going forward. Hopefully we can do well here. Because right now we are definitely struggling. Seven. We've lost 7,000 already. Holy crap. Do they have air superiority? They might. I mean, these infantry here sucks, but I'm not sure how we can really do it. So, yeah. Not great. So, one division that way, though. Good. We'll get them. Of course, they did finish their battle over there. I don't think we get any benefits or buffs or anything like that, which does kind of suck. That's alright. Um, we have members of Kerensky. We have something like anti swastika stuff, any German direct recovery rate, reinforce rate. These guys, though, the Krasnodarsk Soviet government has members of the Second Union. They have a limping army, which is actually very good for attack and defense. Holy crap. I wonder if it's a little more difficult to take them out. They have even way more attack and defense of core territory. Holy crap. Even though they did lose some organization, they got even more attack and defense. Holy crud. Jesus. Goodness, goodness, goodness. Uh, fight for equality. It's their duty to bring true equality for all races that inhabit Russia. I also never pro uh, truly prosper unless all people, regardless of sex, race, or religion, are guaranteed the rights to succeed and participate in free society. But where's the fun in that? Can you guys take on the tank? Yes, you can, actually. Infantry gives you a little bit harder of a time, but that's okay. Also, what do we have here? Occupation policies. So like, oh, local autonomy. Yes, please. Also, you're going to be... Uh, 650-40. I'd rather use, you guys use, do this. And here, let's do it like this. Just... I guess... Military police. There we go. Nice. So we're doing? Eh, we'll see. Uh, military police, we're going to use it anyways immediately, so that's fine. Planes, yeah. There you go. 
Liberal Trinity. I know blood, let's go for China. Russian liberalism will have to be taking on a new face for going forward, and the legacy of the old constitutional democratic party is a difficult one to live up to. What was once a socialist liberal party favoring universal suffrage and workers' rights is now considered to be many a big town party representing classical and social liberals, as well as some moderate conservatives. A tough coalition to maintain, and the now incumbent president, Vladimir Nabokov, has taken it upon himself to keep the diverse party together for Russia's sake. As part of the election campaign, Nabokov has managed to satisfy all three parties by focusing on three simple ideas, international justice, social equality, and economic liberty. Ambitious ideas for a divided nation such as Russia, Nabokov will have to maneuver carefully through the virgin landscape of the Duma politics, if his tenure is to be one of that uh, that truly champions the rights of men and citizen that he so cherishes. Working for the motherland's benefits. Buying for justice, buying for liberty. Ooh, getting more political power. Economic liberty is one of the main platforms that President Nabokov ran on. It's high time that we address that many uh, economic issues plaguing the Republic. Only through economic liberal measures can we restart the once great Russian economy. Lost 13,000 versus 36,000. That's actually doing quite a bit better now. Um, just going in. If you can start encircling soldiers, I know it would be better to do with like trucks and stuff like that, but whatever. Mm, you should still be beat them up, maybe. Well, we'll see. Yeah, it's pretty slow going in some of these parts here, which does suck. And that's why I want to reintegrate stuff. Russian nationalism, we can wait for that one. I would like to get to partial mobilization. So, we'll see. We're fine for equality, my friends. At least in this campaign, we are. <laughs> not every campaign. Definitely not every campaign. Vladimir Karzevsky. Karzevsky. Coup d'etat. Very nice, very nice. Good to Kaisel. Start taking all these VPs. Novosibirsk would be very nice. Krasnoyarsk, of course, would be very nice as well. Liberty, yes, please. Incentives for industrialization. The progressive solution. The national solution. I like national solutions. New World Overtures. Well, it doesn't mean we get it too much immediately. Uh, let's go this way. Incentives for industrialization. Oh, I thought it was 5% construction speed. No, it's 25%. Many companies, both foreign and domestic, are wary of investing in what many see as American puppet state. Well, as far from the truth, we must still convince them to invest in Russia's heavy industry. Perhaps few under the table or under the desk bribes them up to change their mind. I'll win it better. Almost an organizer. That's good. An engineer as well as maybe even a ranger. Cool, cool, cool. We would definitely need to get more uh, manpower, though. Ah, uh, supplies, of course. This is Russia. It's going to suck hard. <coughs> uh, do we have any planes? Actually, yes, we do, but I didn't throw them on here yet. My bad. Buying for liberty. Oh, I didn't even know you guys were here, too. Should you guys use you guys earlier. That would definitely help us out. Uh, yes, please. Resource prospecting, off map, uh, you know, 25% growth, why not? Development of projects in the furthest reaches of Russia are unfortunately quite lacking, so we should promote local public works and enrich even the most remote towns. Royal is cool in Romania. We're doing any damage here? Doesn't look like it. That sucks. Then again, I mean, we're pretty far away from everyone else, so. Kemerovo, man, you just gone nuts. Krasnoyarsk, both of you go to Krasnoyarsk. You go there, and you go there. Well, I actually might not need to go there. We'll see. Hey, cut off. Beautiful. Ah. Uh, Yenisex Conf Confederation, not Conference Week. Confederation. Hey, take the airbase. Hey, that actually will help out. You get the planes here fast enough, you can start bombing the crap out of our enemies. But I guess that that's only if the AI wants it to. Pocket something goes down, resource prospect. prospecting. Russia's filled with vast wealth just beginning to be used, and going forward, we're going to need it. We should loosen the restrictions on prospecting companies so that the state and its people can fully benefit from its riches. Oh, look at this. You all gotta go right there. It's for you. You guys are right there. My goodness. How much further do we need? Oh, we still don't have customers. Now we have customers. Yay! Tech. Now we have everything. Beautiful. All right. Krasnoyarsk, yes, please. 13 new seats. Whereas right now we are at 30 out of 53. Parties is on the heart of the government. Opposition. Petrum Sokor Sokorin. Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Solzhenitsyn. Uh, Isaac Steinberg. And 360 seats are vacant, which is fine. Whatever. Not our problem right now. This first. I'll get more of this one, I think, so.
beautiful. Nice, very good, very good. And we want to reintroduce you too. Encourage private investment. Well, the rights of the individual usurp the needs of the state, and this also applies to the private sector. Well, you need to encourage private companies to invest in Russia's future, but not in the way that makes them uncomfortable or uh, directive. Final conflict, huh? Reversal Red October. Term Soviet government. How big are you? No, oh, good God. Tarkinich. Oh, we need more manpower. This guy shouldn't be too difficult to take out, but still. Ah. We lose weekly stability from doing this and manpower, but you know what? I'd rather have the cores. 60,000 manpower should jump up quite a bit. Okay, never mind. We did. We got like 20,000 more. That's it. Well, okay then. Eh, I'm do that. We could use more fuel. Uh, importing Oblast Logistics. The roads and rails between the various oblasts are archaic and incapable of supporting the needs that a modern nation requires of it. We must improve the logistical issues faced by our individual oblasts as soon as possible. Absolutely. Um, defensive, offensive. You get soft attack and hard attack, which is nice. But you get more organization here and max entrenchment, which I do like a little bit more. Soft attack is not bad. I like that, but... You get organization, which it can be attack and defense, so... That is that, yes. Keep going, guys. Keep going. Doing great. We're going to get Austin. Norilsk. It's not really worth much here. Eh, there's 160-some thousand people. It's not a lot, but, you know. It's better than nothing. These guys aren't worth using. They'll get, just get ripped up out there. Fine for liberty. Very strong one. That we do have. Military factories, civvies, civvies. Multi population. How are the Russian armed forces? A strong city also needs a strong domestic army that'll be able to deal with all the problems that lie ahead, of course. Modernizing entire army is not an easy task, but we'll have to start somewhere. The first thing we have to do is form a base of operations from where from which we will coordinate our further efforts towards the creation of a modern Russian army that will bravely fought for everything that the Russian people lost. The Russian armed force will be a masterpiece of our military plans, and we intend to remain so until the very end, of course. Hey, way more manpower now. That's good. Oh, this, that's better. All the way up. Keep going. Where are you at? Why are you taking so long? Sujiyo. Who do we have here? Igor. Orlov. Nekrasov. Pasternak. Oh. Dreamy intellectual, huh? Why is the army? Army and its needs. Um, Fight for justice. Social Security Act. <coughs> Religious Schooling Act. Female Employment Act. Well, let's get some more civvies and millies. Siberian industry. The waste of Siberia should be out desolate, shouldn't be desolate. And the opportunities for vast industrialization are balanced. We shall further industrialize uh, our vast and populated lands. Although Russia's movie industry has largely been irrelevant since the nation's tumultuous recreation, there's been interest from the movie studios across uh, uh, the ocean of its relatively new state. Taking on the role of former uh, Russian Supreme Leader and Admiral Alex Alexander Kolchak, the Russian American superstar yield bring their stars in a historical epic about the controversial leader's life and downfall in Cisa de Mills, this masterpiece, the Admiral, starring y Yoshiko Yamaguchi as a Japanese liaison of Sagdartris. The film critics from around the world have sung unanimous praise for what they are calling a timeless piece of kino for the ages, an unmistakable pioneering film, polishing the boundaries of cinematography and sound design, an instant seller at Russian box office as the film's content has even sparked debates among the political elites on the Supreme Leader's legacy in Russian history going forward, and their tireless quest to one day fully unite arena the broken mother motherland in Russia. That's the end moving it out. Just in time, we got 3,800 more guns. And nothing says lovely like a bunch of guns. And Germany's trying to tear up all its uh, former territories. 
Once again, but that's pretty normal. Germans just doing what Germans do best. And Norsk, yes. Uh, civilian, Siberian industry, I think it was. Uh, we'll do a couple more of these off screen. Increase military production. Even the most progressive nations cannot survive without a military wing to back it up. The world military shall be uh, still be one of national liberation defense against foreign invasion, but it needs means to do so. Further funding in the armed sector shall facilitate this. Industrialization of the Urals? Oh, can't quite do that one. But the Euro Mountain stands a testament to the Russian fortitude and will, but it remains a largely undeveloped land. We shall waste no time bringing these wonders of nature under civilizing thumb. Agricultural modernization. The state of our new rurality is dire indeed, and many farmers continue to use outdated and inefficient methods of farming with little yield. We must hand, lend a helping hand to our societal backbone in the fields and usher in a new age of farming. And shrine private property. The rights of the individual to own property is one of the Republic's greatest enshrined rights in its constitution. It's uh, our mandate that the rights of the landowner be protected at all costs in the name. Of individual liberty, we shall. The Social Security Act. <clears throat> social Security Act is something that we can agree with our social democratic counterparts on. However, they are a bit too radical in their approach on the matter. Uh, perhaps more modern compromise, it should be a little bit more suitable. Sucks we can't do this one yet. Oh, that's not bad. And then we'll do preparing against Bolshevik menace. The time comes soon, the moment of greatest glory of uniting the nation once for all under the banner of liberty and end of the Red Oppression. Uh, obviously, make it known that they were sent by the devil Lucifer himself with the red arm armbands and banners. The final conflict, the odds are admittedly not in our favor. The discussing communists in the West have more resources at their disposal than the armies that back it up. The only way we can ever hope to succeed in eradicating the foul stench of Bolshevism will be through careful planning for what will be one final war of ages against only other mortal enemy besides the Nazis. The contradictions of Marxism will be evident to all soon enough. Stabs defensive lines. As a war with the Bolsheviks will soon come, we must be prepared. While we already are looking forward to our forward's offensives, we must also improve our defenses in the case of operational failure. Building new airfields. Or an airfield. As the government moves towards a state of war, we must prepare ourselves. The newer wars fall in the air as much as on the ground. Therefore, we must spend time and capital to develop our air force and its airfields. Very much. Not so much in the Navy, though. I'm pushing hard to go to war as fast as I possibly can, but uh, we'll see if we actually do go to war. Raise emergency reserves. Wars fought with men as much as they're fought with weapons and machines. Therefore, only fully manned mil military can defeat its opponents. We have 26 divisions, which is not bad, but they have up to 100. And a crap ton of manpower. So, yeah, not great. Uh, Reform NKVD is actually pretty good for them. Prime Minister Freeman, Freeman huh? That's a crap ton of political power. The new Soviet army, army speaking, goes down. Um, we get a crap ton of population, though. And way less organization. Lots of damaged garrisons. Union and shambles. It's not bad. And synthetic oil, fuel gain, convoys, computing. Might as well. Emergency reserves. As it should be. More encryption and decryption. And then uh, reverse red October. We could do this. The time's come. We need to reverse the damage done during the October Revolution repair. What is left to our country to destroy by the faculty? Uh, faulty lies of the Bolshevik and communism. But first, let's modernize the army first. We were left with a bunch of old weapons and equipment, and who knows what, since we started the function of the state with the center of Vladivostok. What is at our disposal is an unreliable old fashioned weapon that cannot cope with everything that our enemies can acquire or create in a short time. We must implement new plans that will make the armament of our army, as well as the general readiness of the Russian armed forces, a far more deadly means compared to the current situation which we find ourselves in. Because I want to get that, uh, get through the land auction as fast as possible and get more army XP. And that's really pretty much it. That's the main goal first. We're trying to, I'm also trying to build up some more supply through here. Because my god, supply's going to be god awful. And as long as we get enough supply and the enemies don't, that's going to be super, super good. Of course, we're not making any railroads here yet, but I want to make sure at least, the very, 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 very least, we can get that uh, supply base built, which would be good. And then I'll do that. No, you're not connected. Whatever. All right, not bad. And reverse road October. Yeah. Uh, how long will it actually take? Ooh, till July 30th. You know what? Fine. Let's keep working on our army then. Semyonov's three demands. Our chief of st army staff, Grigory Semyonov, came before us with three demands of mind, equipment, manpower, and officers. Equipment for all of our people need to be able to fight in accordance with the needs of wars. Men so that we can fill the empty spaces in the walls of our battle lines, as well as experienced leadership that will lead all these people. Teach them how to use equipment and prepare them for the wars that will be before us. If we manage to fulfill his demands, we believe that we will be able to be proud of our army. Because apparently right now, we definitely are none. Because we're missing a lot of equipment. Not good. We gotta at least have trains. Alright. And then the next one we'll probably grab will be this one. Because you get more population, which is very needed. So, And that, that more organization as well. Which would be very good. 
Uh, save some more political power for now. Army XP, war propaganda. Don't really need to do that one. Promise the peace would be a waste. Uh, Russian nationalism. I don't think has anything down here yet, which is fine. And officers, equipment. It's not bad. A lot of blueprints for everything. Helicopter cost sacks, manpower. Not really worth it. Encourage Russian enlistment, minority enlistment. Russian enlistment would be better, but officers. For wars and for leading the army, we need highly trained personnel. We do not have too many to choose from. What we need in this situation is either an incentive or improve, to improve. The current professional staff would find new people who will be able to train and lead our armies in the divisions in the future. So really, really goal. Just make more divisions right now. We don't have enough military factories as is. I'm going to pop you up just a little bit more for now. Um, the army and its needs. Uh, fuel, might as well. Since its inception, the Russian Republican Army has been an underfund and undercooked mess, taking on Russian emigres from Manchukuo and exiled generals from abroad. The civilian government had little to work with, and even less so as it filtered out anti Republican figures from its ranks. As it stands right now, the Russian army requires three things new equipment for soldiers, more recruits for the ranks, and a brand new officer corps. If it ever bring Russia together under the banner of freedom and liberty, the army, it seems, will need extensive reforms. So, well, then, let's get to work and open the Pyotr Rangel Military Academy. The construction of a modern army requires much more than a normal mind could imagine. We need a lot to bring our soldiers to perfection. There's no better way to do that than via military academy. We'll need a certain location where we'll be able to train and further improve them. And what better for the training of our soldiers than an academy that will bear the name of one of the most famous figures during the Russian Civil War. We are speaking, of course, of Peter Engel, the legendary Black Baron. Survive as long as you can, guys. Can't even send, we can't intervene in the conflict. Okay, then. More decryption, more decryption. A quarter million manpower. It's not bad. Are you going to be done soon or what? August 11th or 12th? So be it. Fine. Whatever. Nice. We could just go straight to war next. Uh, lessons from the Siberian Ice March. Suffered significant damage during the retreat through the icebound vast expanse of Siberia during the Civil War, and never recovered from this. We entered it unprepared, but now we know what it looks like when the human soul decides to step into such an environment that is just waiting to take another land, no, take another life. We'll invite March uh, veterans and war theorists who will know how we can adapt to our Siberian conditions, which will one day be a one great help. Mikhaili opens its doors. American influence in the Russian fast in, in the Russian Republic is undisputable, and as the age of fast food joints has been taken off in the U.S., the import of fast food is bound to happen. Opening its first location of Vladivostok, Mikhaili burgers and fries have become an instant hit among the wave of new customers. With lineups such as uh, from around city blocks, people have gone to eating on street corners and park benches when restaurant seating quickly overflowed. The most popular meals on the day, first day included a mimic of White Castle's 10 cent slider combo as well as a never before seen root beer. Not hesitating to capitalize on their instant success, Mikhaili has announced that it will be opening more locations throughout the Republic. The fruits of the West are limitless. Other than like great beef. Huh. I bet that's just fantastic beef. Oof. And mass defections? Well, we'll try the best we can. No guarantees, though, of course. And there you go. Oh, minus 20% supply consumption? Oh, God, yes. As much as I want to get this stuff, that can be kind of ignored for now. Right now, we got all that other stuff done. Supplies looking okay-ish for now around here. It's going to be really bad around here, though. So, if we move fast enough, that'd be great, but we'll see. Create one of these two. Reverse Red October, and Lessons from the Siberian March will be good as well. And we'll go to war economy. Straight to war economy. Because we have to. Hopefully we do okay. I'll have our support artillery. Nice. Support equipment, infantry equipment, support, and yeah, I don't have a ton. You two. You're like ding dongs. There you go. See what you can do. If you do well, great. If not, you know, oh well. They are attacking us a little bit, which is good to see. And 
poor economy. Good so far, 2,000 versus 5,000. Oh, they actually finished off Turkmenistan, that's not good, okay. If you can do that one, that'd be great. Whatever, if not, that's okay. Don't worry about attacking for now. Hold the line. Over here, uh, I'm fine with you guys attacking. That's fine with me. Modern Recon Brigades... Living off the land. Whatever soldier must learn in the conditions is the following. You can never know when and where you'll find yourself in every upcoming conflict. Whether you find yourself in a mountain uh, hinterland, I see desert, tundra, sea coast, an ocean without any basic necessities. What you'll need at the point is experience of coping in impossible situations like those to get food, water, or in case you can't find it. To focus on escaping such a situation and finding other divisions. Or the first place from where you want to continue your path to salvation. If you master the technique of living from the earth, you'll be able to oppose everything that will be in front of you. Um... Ooh. Oh, we have arms. That's nice. Hold the line for now. Don't worry about attacking. They will attack us soon. Uh, they are still attacking us. Pavlodar. Ooh, that's not good. Get, get a line, guys. Get a line. Oh, we got a third general here, huh? Well, alright then. Not a lot to lose. Nope. I don't ever remember making this division either, so. Wait, what happened? Oh. Oh. Okay. That's not bad then. Oh, that worked out really well in our flavor. Flavor? Favor. Well, time to go in. We'll split the, the the land between us and them, and then we'll have to take these guys out too. Oh god. Um, centralized army command? Factionalization within any command, political or military, leads to many problems that we will not be able to solve in time, will bring us to our knees exactly how we le when we least need it. So, our enemies who share or have to share the same view and way of, of fighting wars, to take a convincing victory against us. By creating a single military command in our army, we will be able to more easily coordinate the actions of our troops and more easily determine what and how we will do it. Uh, this will prevent divisions within the army to ensure safe and steady progress in our goals. Are they never good enough? Death to the false government. Actually, how many losses have we taken? 19,000? Well, that sucks, man. Living off the land. I'll get more recon, that's nice. Modern recon brigades. Scouting in the key, in, is a key before every battle that opens the locked door of victory. Our scouts are good, but as time went on, the experience and equipment are outdated for all the troubles that can befall us. So if we redirect our force and focus on modernizing recon brigades, we'll be able to find ourselves behind enemy backs without any problems, to attack them suddenly when they do not expect it, and to defeat them so strongly that it would never occur to them to again oppose us. Well, we will see. Get them rails over there. My god, do we need it. More manpower too. We're definitely, definitely, definitely gonna need that. If we get to the AA line and let's fight these guys, I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's gonna be a giant bloodbath. A huge bloodbath. Oh, is air superiority? We're doing okay here. What happened here? I don't like how this is all divided. Leave us. Leave us. Goodbye. Oh, and we're towards liberation. Now is our time. We must not stop now, but must catch the full momentum that we achieved when we got a strong win in our backs. Our goal is very clear. We will not stop until we liberate all our people who are under the very occupation of communists and fascists. We must not allow them to do that. We must fight against them for the common good that is in our hearts. Fall forward towards liberation. Very much, man. Very much. Look, I'm okay. If they want to all die there. I'm perfectly fine with that. We've lost 21,000. That's gonna. The Germans have been doing some serious numbers on them. <coughs> oh man. 
Uh, I'll be I'll be fine with the AA line maybe. Oh, they have a lot. Martin Borman, what have you been up to? You and Millie Map are left. Not that many divisions. Poland is just resistance is all heck. You know, I'm getting compliance. That's great. Resistance is going down though, which is not good. Do they not? What are they doing? Why is resistance so high, but it's going down? Towards liberation, my friends. Equipment. Well, we can wait for that one, maybe. Manpower. Eh, kind of wait for that one. Modernize the Air Force. Like every sector of equipment on land and on the water, the air sector is vastly outdated, can lead to problems if not enough attention is paid to it. Land oil can easily fall from the sky, so it can't even take off at all. We need to solve this problem. We'll begin the entire program of modernization of our aviation to such perfection that there will be no better aircraft over the Russian sky and Pacific waters, except maybe uh, the American ones. Uh, Mikhail expands operations. Uh, following the initial success of his first restaurant in Vladivostok, uh, Mikhail has since opened new locations across the capital. As smaller towns across the Republic gradually grow amidst years of government neglect, the demand for the same amenities as the capital has has only grown to scale. Looking to expand its new market, Mikhail Burgers and Fries have announced its first out of city locations in Khabarovsk and Yakutsk and other settlements. The move is projected to bring new jobs to the struggling states in Siberia and further export the greatest benefits that Western capitalism has to offer. And burgers for the rich and the poor. What's well, not to love? We need more, way more guns. We need way more of everything. Well, what else is new? Thing of rubber? Fine. Fine. Hydration, salt, whatever. Just go. They gotta eat way easier because, you know, it's pretty f relatively flat ish. Ish. Around some of those areas, so. But let's keep going with uh, fighting for justice. It's in the fight for social justice, not just at home, but abroad as well, which is rising in Russia. The world, however, has largely abandoned the belief of supporting the people and their inalienable to freedom and self determination. Clearly, it's up to us, and that stand with President Nabokov, to bring the light of freedom, justice, and liberty to the oppressed peoples of the world. And we'll see how far we get. It is 30, 57 already. Not bad. That's organization loss of moving is very good as well. Nice. There you go. Doing well, doing well. So very painful doing it like this, but you know, that's okay. Sometimes we gotta suffer for what, what we want. I didn't really using tanks either. Um logistics not really using those either. I wish we could core stuff earlier on. Controls perm. Magnitogorsk would be nice. The fight for universal social justice won raw with controversy. However, as many on the right fear that our actions may in fact fringe on the rights of ethnic Russians. We have to consort this whole thing out with them in order to go forward. Where's perm? Moskva is over there. Not bad so far. Could be better. Or convoys? Eh. I think we'll be okay for now. Oh! That's... Oh! They capitulated! Holy crap! They already capitulated. Well, give the Nazis a, a good chunk of territory because they kind of deserve all this stuff. But my god, I hope they don't try to go to war with us. And they probably will in all honesty. too difficult for us. Oh, none of us got to this this far anyway, so... Kazan? Yurolsk? Well, what would that look so far? No, eh, it's not bad. Definitely not perfect. We need to get the Soviets. At least we can do that one. 174 new seats. That's, that's pretty good. Um, okay, not bad. Alex gonna start Oslin, of course. 
Because if you really want to come over too, get three around, you're not very good, but whatever. Oh, good God, we need a lot of stuff here. Grish social just debate. The issue of generation quality is one of the most controversial ones within our parties, while well various liberal, moderate, conservative wings have thrown their hats into the metaphorical ring on the matter. As demands to address systematic inequality goes further every day, we have to decide how the side of the party to back on the matter. Liberal wing? Conservative wing. Well, we're liberals, aren't we? Um, I played as the conservative side before, so I feel just slightly more empowered on the conservative side, because then the next time I actually do this, then we'll actually get more progressive wing. So let's go with the conservative wing. Uh, for the sake of democracy, we all work with the right in dealing with social justice issues. It's in our best interest to cooperate with people of varying political opinions instead of a totalitarian one-party state after all. Um, what is this? The Religious Schooling Act. Schools funded by our, or sponsored by religious institutions are not born in Russia. However, they have largely lagged behind other public schooling system in terms of source, resources. We should help out these centers of, centers of education even if we're committed to the separation of church and state is integrated or ingrained. <coughs> Uh, trials of the NKVD officers. Discuss in the world only that describes these evil officers accurately. Under the Bolsheviks, these opportunists and commons did the best to handle those who fought and struggle for liberty in the names of Bolshevik and international socialism. They now face Dyke, the goddess of justice. All right. Fighting for justice. That's that one, too. A little bit of lag, probably because someone's getting released. And. Must be Muscovine or something like that. Oh god. The game was about to literally crash on me. Ah, see, Alex, come outside, Muscovine. Maybe I should have just taken this stuff too. Because they didn't get that far either. Hmm. You know what? Make them look a little better. We'll take that too. We'll take all this stuff too. I don't know how much to give them. Angles. That makes more sense to me. There you go. Go ahead and train. There you go. This way they have their full Lax Commissariats. We have our place. It's almost like TNO Rush at this point. Weapons development. Um, NKVD officers. Industrialization of the Urals, which we'll do as well. Empowering the oppressed. Many ethnic minorities in Russia have been excluded from many top government positions over the centuries. And the status quo of Russian supremacy is one that must end for us to truly become a modern nation state. For the sake, we must ensure that the, such repression is never repeated again in the perm trials. It's over for the Bolshevik traitor. The general soldiers and other tra traitors and uh, collaborators with the Red Army are finally to face justice for the crimes against humanity, liberty, and people, and the basic rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The evidence is overwhelming in the mere existence of the NKVD, a special police unit established in 1934, destroying dissidents and opposition to the Bolshevik regime. Since the establishment of the Soviet Union in 1922, the regime consolidated power, ruling with an iron fist. The Communist Party was the only party legally allowed, and anyone seen as a dissident, both within and without the party, would be forced to work under horrible conditions and work camps. Known as gulags under the Red Government, exploiting and enslaving the people in the name of economic expansion. The sole history of the establishment of the Soviet Union is evidence enough to sentence these criminals to the rightful punishment, death. The communist state led directly to our gruesome civil war, and our later, later defeat at the hands of the fascist German menace. It's treason against the nation on account of incompetence. Make them pay. But we'll pretty much end it there. Um, we're going to read this, do this focus off screen, we'll probably economic cosmopolitanism. As the world economies grow closer, we can now take ones left in, be the ones left in the dust. It is Russia's ultimate destiny that we rejoin this growing global community, and our reinvigorated economy should not only make these around the world prosper, but in return also make us prosper too. Open Jewish cultural centers. Our small Jewish population has been gradually growing as many flee the horrible conditions of the German Reichskommissarz and the Bolshevik are terrible rule. Over turn over new leaf in Russia's long history of anti-Semitism. Oh, we shall fund the opening of the new cultural centers for Jew Russia's Jewry. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll probably finish out this campaign in all honesty by fighting the Germans. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.